The FFS2000 is a fusion splicing workstation which is capable of performing all steps of the splice process. Strip, cleave, clean, splice, recoat and proof test. This video will discuss how to load and unload fibres correctly at the splice station and perform an automated one button splice using the blue button. If you have not yet watched the videos about stripping, cleaning and cleaving fibres using an FFS2000, click on the annotations or see the description below for links to view these first. Splicing is carried out at the splice station on the unit. To produce high performance splices that have low loss and high proof strength, it is vital that the fibres are loaded and unloaded at the splice station correctly using the transfer jig. The basics of this procedure are described here, but click on the annotation or see the link in the description below to view another video which explains this process in more detail. There are several alignment holes situated around the splice station that accommodate the transfer jig. Note the metal platforms or bushings around each hole. Ensure that the mirror toggle is facing backwards to avoid damaging the mirror in the splice head. Before splicing, ensure there are two stripped, cleaned and cleaved fibres loaded into the left and right hand sides of the transfer jig at the splice station. Ensure that the pins on the underside of the transfer jig are parked on the platforms, also called bushings, surrounding these alignment holes. This causes the jig to be raised slightly from the top surface of the unit. Later, once the fibre holding block and prepared fibres are loaded into the jig, it will be seated in the alignment holes during a splice. For one button automated splices, the unit automatically carries out a sequence of processes as listed in the splice file, seen here on the right. The first process in a typical splice file is load fibres. To start the automated splice process, click the blue button in the software or press the blue button on the unit. This moves the splice head across to the right to its load fibres position, where the filament is positioned at the tips of the fibres. Lift the transfer jig so that the pins on its underside are over the alignment holes around the splice head. Once in position, drop the transfer jig to locate the pins in these holes. The transfer jig will now be resting on the top surface of the unit and the fibres are now loaded at the splice station. Once the fibres are loaded, either click close on the pop-up window in the software, press the spacebar on the keyboard or press the blue splice button on the machine. This will cause the splice head to move back to the left hand side to the view position where the fibre tips are positioned over the lens in the splice head. The splice cap can be closed either before or after the splice head makes its move to the left and this will enable the fibres to be viewed in the software. The loaded fibres should appear in similar positions on screen from one splice to the next. The unit will then continue through the other processes in the splice file as it carries out a one button automated splice. With the click of a single button, the unit automatically executes each step of the splice process, producing the same reliable and repeatable results. Once completed, the splice can be viewed in either the back or the front view. To remove the fibres, open the splice cap. Then, first lift the left side of the transfer jig, and then the right side. This ensures that the fibre on the left side of the splice, which is surrounded by the filament, moves upwards vertically without touching the filament as the fibre is removed. Once the fibre has been removed from the splice head, the transfer jig can be placed on the metal platforms surrounding the alignment holes as before.